Hello everyone, I am Dr. Anupam and today we will be discussing another video on our ARDS lecture series. Today we will discuss the ventilatory strategy in an ARDS patient. So let us go straight into it. Ventilatory strategies in ARDS patient. Now before discussing the ventilatory strategy, let us clear some basic concepts. Right. So the ARDS lung is actually consists of three part. Right. So we have this part that is consolidated lung and it is non recruitable. The lung which has consolidated, it cannot recruit them, right? Then we have this is collapsed, and this is recruitable, right? And then at the end, we have what you call a normal lung. So if you further divide into two part, one will be, this is the non aerator lung, right? And this is the aerated lung or, so this is the aerated lung right? or can be aerated lung if these lung units can be recruited, right? So now, in a normal patient, if you use a tidal volume of 10 to 12 ml per kg body weight, what will happen? It will distribute to the whole of the lung. That will be every part of the lung, normal lung, right? But in this scenario, in ARDS patient, what happens is, the actually functioning lung is less. So this is called the baby lung. If this is the whole lung, the aerated lung, which is the smaller part or a subunit of the total lung, that is called the baby lung. So now if you give tidal volume of 10 to 12 ml per kg of body weight, what will happen is, because this is non erected lung, this total volume will preferentially go to the baby lung and it will create a very high airway pressure and it will be delivered to the baby lung. The result of which is there will be production of lung injury because you are giving a very high volume. So it will produce Volutrauma, barotrauma, right? Because you are providing a larger volume and larger area of pressure to a smaller lung. That is called a baby lung concept. So in ARDS, not only you are dealing with a stiff lung, but also you are dealing with a small lung. So you have to take care of both these things. So that is the reason why there is the concept of lung protective ventilation right it is two part one is low tidal volume and second one is pip so what happens actually this is the part of the lung which is actually recruitable so when you give a tidal volume, what will happen is this part of the lung, they will be recruited. As soon as the tidal volume is withdrawn, it will again collapse. So there will be opening collapse, opening collapse. So it will produce what we call as atelectroma. And this all is called villi, ventilator induced 
lung injury right so we have to give lung protective ventilation in form of low tidal volume and PEEP which forms as a part of upon lung approach the armor trial suggested us the tidal volume should never become more than 6 ml per kg and we should always use a PEEP more than equal to 5 cm of water this is to prevent atelic trauma this is to prevent volutrauma or barotrauma right so this is the concept behind the ventilatory strategy that we'll discuss now in ARDS patient right so what is the ventilatory strategy step one calculation of predicted body weight or ideal body weight what do you mean by that so in the beginning it was thought that the volume of the lung or the size of the lung is actually dependent upon the body weight of a person the actual body weight of a person but it is actually not so so now the concept is that the size or volume of the lung is actually dependent upon the height of the lung sorry the height of the human being right so depending upon the height we have to calculate the ideal body weight so the formula is for male it is 50 plus 2.3 into height in inches minus 60 right and for female it becomes 45.5 plus 2.3 into height in inches minus 60 once you've calculated the predicted body weight the next step is initiate ventilation so you choose a tidal volume in the beginning 8 ml per kg of predicted body weight and decrease tidal volume by 1 ml per kg of idle body weight in every less than equal to 2 hours right until we reach a tidal volume of 6 ml per kg of predicted body weight right this is number one number two is set a respiratory rate to a minute ventilation that is normal for that patient ideally we target a minute ventilation of 6 to 10 liter per minute so you have to set the respiratory rate according to that and third is apply a peep at least 5 centimeter of water and this is to prevent the end expiratory collapse or derequipment of the recruited alveoli right number three point will be how to assess So, when there, so whenever there is the question of assessment, we have to define our target points. Right? So, we have basically three target points. The number one and the most important is plateau pressure target. How the plateau pressure is calculated? You put a 0 0.5 second hold. That is called the inspiratory pause and then calculate the p plat right so here we have two options right if the p plat is more than 30 which is not desired so our plateau pressure target will be 28 to 30 centimeter of water less than right so this is our target 
so if it is more than 30 that is not desirable so what we can do here is decrease the tidal volume by 1 ml per kg of ideal body weight until the tidal volume becomes 4 ml per kg or P plat becomes less than 25 right so we have to decrease the tidal volume because in our last class we have seen the most efficient way to decrease the plateau pressure is to decrease the tidal volume right so we have to decrease it if the plateau pressure is less than 45 uh, sorry if the plateau pressure is less than 25 that is more than desired in this situation what we can do if the tidal volume is less than 6 ml per kg of ideal body weight we can increase the tidal volume by 1 ml per kg of ideal body weight until we have either P plat is more than 25 or tidal volume is more than or equal to 6 ml per kg of ideal body weight or predicted body weight right so this you have to remember this is the most important target of everything the plateau pressure target right now the second target is pH target so whenever we are ventilating a patient with low tidal volume there is a chance that the patient is not ventilated properly so there will be PCO2 rise so patient will have acidosis so our pH target will be 7.30 to 7.45 right so you we can have three options here number one pH is less than 7.30 but more than 7.15 what to do here here what we can do is increase the respiratory rate until pH is more than 7.30 or respiratory rate is 35 right that we have to do second is if the pH is less than 7.15 here what we can do obviously we have to increase the respiratory rate to 35 here additionally we have to increase the tidal volume by 1 ml per kg until the tidal volume is 6 ml per kg per predicted body weight right so here two things if the pH is less than 7.15 patient is severely acidotic of course you have to increase the respiratory rate but at the same time also increase the tidal volume until the tidal volume becomes 6 ml per kg per predicted body weight right Number three, if the pH is more than 7.45, then just simple solution decrease the respiratory rate. Right? Then we have a third target that is the oxygenation target. Right? Our oxygenation target is PO2 60 to 90 or SpO2 88 to 92 percent right so how to achieve that we have to fiddle with the FiO2 and PEEP that you have discussed in the last class to maintain a PO2 of 60 to 90 and SpO2 88 to 92 percent right how to measure the plateau pressure right so we have to so this is the This is the flow time, this is the pressure time, right. So what happens is in the volume control ventilation, the flow time will be square wave form like this and the pressure will be a sloppy kind of waveform, right. So here what we have to do for plateau pressure measurement is 
गिव ए पॉइंट फाइव सेकेंड ऑफ इंस्पिरेटरी पॉल्स राइट पॉइंट फाइव सेकेंड ऑफ इंस्पिरेटरी पॉल्स इफ दे हैव बॉटम इन द वेंटिलेटर यू हैव टू जस्ट प्रेस इट समटाइम्स यू हैव टू जस्ट प्रेस इट समटाइम्स यू हैव टू प्रेस इट फॉर अ कंसिडरेबल अमाउंट ऑफ टाइम देन वॉट विल हैपन बिकॉज दर इज ए पॉल्स नाउ वॉट विल हैपन इज इन द फ्लो टाइम इज द फ्लो टाइम there will be pause then there will be expiratory waveform right similarly in the pressure time also peak there is a pause here then there will be acceleration right so this pressure after the pause this is called the p plat this is the pause time 0.5 second pause right and this pressure after the p pause or the inspiratory pause is the p plat and this p plat target is less than 30 cm of water right this is how we calculate the p plat how to measure p plat so today in our class of discussing ventilatory strategies in rds first we discuss about the concept behind long protective ventilation and open lung approach then you have discussed based on the arma trial the rds net protocol how to do it and how to assess things then we have discussed how to measure the p plateau pressure or plateau pressure of the lung that is a major target or prime target of our ventilatory strategies in rds thank you very much